In this video, I'm going to attempt to survive 100 days on one block in Minecraft Hardcore. Imagine if everything you've ever wanted in Minecraft was put into one infinitely regenerating block. The whole Minecraft world controlled by one thing. Now, what if that block was to give you things like friendly animals, hostile monsters, rare valuables, and even portals to access other dimensions? The one block I'm going to be starting this adventure with has the ability to regenerate itself whenever it is destroyed, meaning every time I break it, I will obtain a new block to help me on my journey. So with that being said, let's do this. But before we do, here are three things I want to achieve in these 100 days. The first thing I would like to achieve is seeing as I'm starting this adventure on one single block, I want to see just how much building I can get done. The second thing I would like to get done is to obtain full netherite armor and tools. And the final thing I want to attempt to achieve is to defeat the Ender Dragon. Oh, and remember, this is hardcore, so if I make a single mistake, I won't be able to respawn. I am very interested to see what I can get done in 100 days of hardcore on one block, so let the 100 days begin! Our story starts here, just me on this one single block with nothing but a void beneath me. I glanced around the block and quickly realized that there was nothing else for as far as the eye could see. It was just me and this one single block. But being the pro gamer that I am, I quickly realized that I had no other option apart from to break the block below me. If I was going to progress, this needed to be done. The regenerating block surprised me with all sorts of different things, such as wood and even a chest. The chest contained some useful items that I would be needing later, such as some eggs and also some saplings so I could grow some trees. I was hesitant to keep destroying the block with myself on top of it, so I decided to extend slightly. By doing this, I could keep a safe distance away from the block and still obtain everything. The block then told me that there was 10 mysterious phases to come. I was unsure of what these were going to be, so I continued mining. And that's when it happened. I got my first friend on the island. I wasn't alone anymore. This pig would be joining me on this one block adventure, and I was super happy. I moved the pig safely over into a corner so it wouldn't fall off, and I continued digging the block. I was then lucky enough to get myself a water bucket. With this, I could allow some water to flow off the side of my island, meaning I could place a block under the infinitely regenerating block. That way, if I was now to get things such as sand or gravel, or any other block that could fall, it would be safe. I then stumbled upon a chest which had hearts flowing from the inside, which means there could only be something good waiting on the inside. I glanced over at my pig and dived in to see what treasures were waiting for me. It gave me some logs, an extra sapling, and also a torch. But little did I know by breaking this, I would access the next phase in our adventure. I waited for the countdown to zero, and I could only assume I was in the next phase. I decided to explore it by breaking all of the blocks, and I was surprised with yet another animal. It was a pig, which means now I had two of these, I could make some sort of small farm with the limited resources that I had. With some of the wood that I had gathered up to this point, I decided to make a crafting table and all of the essential tools. I then turned my planks into slabs so then I could get more of an efficient building block. I then extended my island and couldn't wait to see the smiles on my pig's faces when they found out I was building them a new home. I then crafted some components that I would need for this farm, such as some fences and also a fence gate. Once I was done constructing this small farm, I moved the pigs in. And they were super happy. I moved my crafting table out the way and got back to work on mining this block. Along the way I got a bunch of surprises, including this cow, and also this sheep, and even this chicken, which wanted to tell you guys something. The chicken said that if everyone was to subscribe right now, then the channel would hit 1 million subscribers, so what are you waiting for? If you enjoy the content and haven't already subscribed, then it would mean a lot to me if you did. I then thanked the chicken for reminding me to tell you guys this, and continued mining. And before I knew it, the block then surprised me with an amazing gift. And after destroying this chest with all of the goodies inside, I then got another upgrade. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. A stone block, which means I was now in some sort of cave phase. I decided to make a pickaxe and get to work to see what surprises were awaiting me. After making some progress through this phase, I realized I was correct. This was definitely some type of cave or stone phase. And although it was only coming up to day two, my inventory was getting filled with goodies, so that's when I had to make a small storage area. I put everything inside of a chest and then decided to ditch my wooden tools, seeing as I wouldn't need them anymore. It was time to upgrade to stone. Once this was done, I had a fresh set of tools to start mining with. 
Before I knew it, I had a brand new animal on the island. This was a mushroom cow and would become a great source of food for all of the mushroom stew I would be able to get. I had a bunch of new friends on my island and everything was going great. That was until two zombie foes decided to summon themselves on my island. It was time to fight. I used my axe to defend myself against these zombie foes. With some accurate melee hits, I was able to take both of the zombies out and defend my island. After this battle, I realized that there was a lot of surprises that this block was going to mysteriously place on my island. So I decided to make a shield and also a sword to keep myself safe. I had no idea of the true powers of this one block. Who knows what it could spawn next? Unfortunately for me, I found out pretty quickly what to expect from this block when a creeper was summoned onto my island. I tried striking with some accurate and quick shots with my sword, but it wasn't fast enough. The creeper was too quick on its feet, and before I knew it, it had exploded one of my chests. Everything that I had worked so hard for was falling down into the depths of the void. After that happened, the block decided to surprise me and cheer me up a little bit after what had just happened. It not only gave me a chest filled with goodies and an empty map that I would save, but it also gave me an upgrade. I waited for the countdown and the next phase was some sort of snow phase. After doing some exploring in this phase, I decided I had to make an iron pickaxe. This would be needed if I was to go any further in this adventure. And on the night of day two, I made a home for my brand new pet dog. And even made a small tree farm to start getting some wood. Before I knew it, it was now day three. And yet again, the block decided to surprise me with some more evil creatures. Seeing as I was in the sky, I was able to knock these hostile foes into the void. Little did I know that the stray that I had just previously hit off my island wanted to seek vengeance. It demanded the block to summon a whole entire army of undead. It was time to prepare for the biggest fight I had up until this point. I was able to take the high ground and strike down on the enemies. Things got intense and my hearts got low, but I battled through. I had a small bowl of mushroom stew and after that everything was okay. This battle then led us on to the next phase. It appeared to be some sort of sand and ocean phase. And after some exploring in this phase as well, I was able to get some brand new turtle friends on the island. And not even too far into the phase, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Diamonds already. I was super happy and mined them straight into my inventory. And just as I thought I couldn't get any luckier, I strike diamonds for the second time in this phase. It was now day four, and up until this point, the animals had nowhere to call home. I gathered all of the blocks I would need for a small island extension, and also a brand new home for the animals. And once I'd gathered everything, it was time to build. With the animals having a brand new home, it was time to advance into the next phase of our adventure. And this appeared to be some sort of abandoned cave phase. And after mining some of the blocks and seeing what things I could expect out of this phase, it was definitely my favourite out of the few so far. It was like it didn't want to stop giving me valuables. And well, seeing as I now had three diamonds as well, I was able to make a diamond pickaxe, which was amazing, but I wasn't worthy of using it yet. I couldn't just go around wasting all of the diamonds it was giving me, I had to be smart with these. I let my dog protect my diamond pickaxe, and for the end of day three, I decided to make an infinite water source and also a farm. For the beginning of day four, I took all of my wheat over to my animals to allow them to breed. I also made some iron armor because up until this point I had nothing to protect myself. And I mean, it was extremely lucky that I made the iron armor when I did because not long into day four, two vexes spawned in front of my eyes. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. They were dealing extreme damage and I was in big trouble. Also not to mention, the vex was equipped with an enchanted sword. I had to choose my hits wisely, but after some calculated attacks, I was able to take the one Vex out and wait for the other one to fly away. I truly can't believe how lucky I got. Once the other Vex was gone, I realized that this block was going to shoot out more threats. So because of this, I decided to make some genius changes to my island. The first one would be this large bridge that I had away from my island. With this, if any Vexes were to spawn, I could sprint in one direction and the Vexes would fly away. The second change that I made was an endless pit to the void. So any mobs that were to spawn on this one block, I could hit them directly into the void. A great example is these witches right here. As soon as they spawned, I was able to hit them into the void. After doing this work on my island and feeling like a genius, I made my way into the next phase. This seemed like some sort of desert phase, and I even got an emerald block. 
I was progressing amazingly with these phases, so I decided to make a small island extension, and this would be a tree farm. The block was now giving me so many random items, I really didn't know what to expect. So if I didn't go ahead and construct some type of tree farm, then I would just be getting a bunch of blocks and my builds would look terrible. So after getting some building materials, it was time to build this tree farm. And there it was, the tree farm extension was now made. So with this now set up, I could get the essential resource at any time I wanted. I then went back to mining and got one of the best surprises ever. A villager friend was joining me on this one block adventure. I realized pretty quickly by just looking at the villager that he wanted some type of home. So that's when I decided to plan my next build and get some more materials. It was time to construct this villager their brand new home. <laughs> The home and farm was complete, so I decided to take the villager on the boat journey of their life. As the sun was setting, I looked at the villager and I couldn't help but see the massive smile on their face. They were super happy that they now had a brand new home. The villager was super safe, but unfortunately, I wasn't. A monster party once again had decided to swarm my island. Luckily for me, it was only a few zombies and pillagers, so I was able to take them out pretty easily. After dealing with this monster party, I went back to mining blocks and got yet again another villager. That means that I now had access to villager breeding. Like usual, the blocks summoned evil foes back to my island. But this was different. This time, one of the pillagers gave me a curse. A raid was preparing itself. It was time for war. I prepared and instantly got to work. I found the pillagers awaiting me in my farm. It was time to fight. The first few waves of the battle were pretty easy and I was able to take out all of the pillagers with ease. That was all until the pillagers equipped with a crossbow did something terrible. My pet panda was gone. I couldn't let them get away with this. I had made a mistake. While I was striking with my sword, I accidentally opened the fence gate, meaning that these two pillagers could charge towards me with their axe and do some serious damage. Everything that I had worked so hard for up until this point could have instantly been taken away from me if I wasn't to be careful. Luckily, I was able to sprint to safety and move on to the next wave. The difficult waves were here, which means I couldn't just go in and battle. I had to make some calculated decisions. I noticed some pillagers were mounted on top of some ravengers, but one of these wasn't an ordinary pillager. One of them was an evoker, which if I was to get close, a vex would spawn and everything could be over. So because I didn't want to get close and engage in combat, I made a trap in the floor, meaning I could lead them over this and they would fall into the void. After a lot of hard work, I was able to lead the pillagers back over the bridge and ultimately into the hole. I was now known as a hero to my villager friends. After the raid was over, I went back to mining the one block and the one block had realized what I had done and rewarded me with a gift. I got some extra goodies, including these bottle of enchants. But even more importantly than that, I was now onto the nether phase. Which means if everything was to go good, I would have access to obsidian and even some lava buckets for some stone generators. As day 22 was ending and day 23 was about to begin, I got some workstations for my villagers. One of them became a farmer and the other one became a librarian. Which I was able to get a sharpness book from and also some bookshelf trades. And seeing as I still had Hero of the Village, I got a great deal on some bookshelves. These bookshelves would help me start making progress towards a full enchantment table. But before I could even go ahead and make an enchantment table, I had to get a source of XP and also mob drops. So that's when I decided to start resource gathering and collecting some components to build a mob farm. And once I'd collected all of the resources, construction began. <laughs> By day 28, I had a full functioning mob farm, but it was time to test this thing out. It was working absolutely amazingly and I was getting a bunch of XP and more importantly mob drops. I now didn't have to worry about getting things like gunpowder, bones and even arrows for my bow. Speaking of bows, one of the skeletons in the mob farm dropped this enchanted bow which was better than the one I was using so I decided to keep it. It was now time to go back to mining the block so for this I decided to make a fresh set of tools and get to work. 
Before I knew it, the block had given me a piece of obsidian, which means it was time to get the diamond pickaxe out of the item frame. My dog had done a pretty good job of looking after it, so I picked it up and went over to the obsidian. And there it was. My first piece of obsidian, and the nether portal was getting closer and closer. And not long after getting the obsidian, I got a lava bucket, which means I could now build a stone generator. As I went to put the lava bucket into my storage area, I realized that everything was full. I really didn't have that much space left, so it was time to build a storage room. I was doing a pretty good job of saving up all my building resources, so it was time to build this thing. There it was, I had fully constructed a storage room and also a safe area around the one block. Now that I was done with this building project, I gave some potatoes to my villagers and opened a chest the one block supplied me with. This chest contained some netherite scraps and I was also able to pick up some ancient debris on the way. I was also surprised with some wither skeletons but I was able to take them out pretty easily. But the withers weren't even the worst part of the nether phase. I had a monster invasion on my island once again. Now knowing the true powers of the one block, this wasn't even a slight bit surprising. The main evil foes that I had to take care of was the two blazes and the gas that invaded my island. With my bow and arrow, I was able to take shots from a range. But I wasn't quick enough to take out the blazes. They had already shot their flames at the villagers' houses. After I was finished fixing up the house, I was able to take out the last two pigmen pretty easily because they couldn't even hit me. And it was now time to move on to the next phase. This phase appeared to be a strange one. I was given blocks like quartz and emerald ore. But I couldn't continue mining because we had a brand new villager on the island. After seeing that the villagers were okay, I went straight back to mining and got through this phase as fast as possible. I wanted to start enchanting and also getting some more diamonds too. I was now waiting for the countdown into the next phase, and this is pretty much everything that I got good out of that phase. I then stood and awaited the first block to appear, and it was a stone brick, which could only tell me one thing. We were now in the stronghold phase. Knowing the dangers that lurk inside of strongholds, I made a replacement helmet, and dealt with another evoker that had spawned in another monster invasion on my island. Although evokers aren't the nicest things, I was pretty happy with it spawning because I was able to get a totem of undying. Which means if anything was to go wrong, this totem of undying would grant me with another life. Now with this monster invasion out the way, I had pretty much nothing to worry about, so I got through this phase as fast as I could. Which now meant I had a lot more work to do. Because I was in the end phase, this is the final phase of them all and when I get to the end of this, the portal will arrive. I could not carry on through this phase and risk the end portal spawning. I had a lot of preparation to do, a lot of enchanting to do and more importantly some more island extending. Ender dragon preparation was now fully underway. The preparation was off to a great start because I was able to get this mending book and look at the smile on my face. I was super excited about this so I had to buy one. As soon as I was done buying the mending book I went straight over to my crafting table and made some components to make a stone generator. The stone generator would give me infinite access to cobblestone, meaning I could construct a lot more buildings. One of the buildings I had in mind was a castle to store my enchantment table, and also my ender dragon egg for when I defeat the ender dragon. By day 53, the cobblestone generator was fully up and functional, so I gave it a little test and it worked great. I then spent the rest of the day building a wall around the cobblestone generator. To start off day 54, I went over to my farm to breed everything and then I could get some leather. With this leather, I could then go ahead and make a bunch of bookshelves. I was able to get a few, but it just wasn't quite enough. So I had to get a few more books, but when that was done, I had 15 bookshelves which is the perfect amount for a max level enchantment. Once the bookshelves were crafted, this only left me with one thing to do and that was to build the enchantment table. It was time to enchant my tools. As soon as I planted the enchantment table in the center of the bookshelves, I instantly got to enchanting and got an unbreaking 3 and efficiency 4 pickaxe and a sharpness 4 fire aspect 2 sword. I really wanted fortune on my pickaxe if I was to come across any diamonds again, so I went ahead and disenchanted the pickaxe to attempt to get fortune 3. After a few tries, I was able to get the best pickaxe I could have asked for. And now once this was done, if I was to come across any diamonds, I would hopefully get a lot more than just one. 
After I enchanted some of my stuff, a shulker came to visit me on my island, and I got rid of it and got a shulker shell instantly. I would go on to save this for a shulker box. Oh, and did I forget to mention the crazy amount of endermen that were spawning throughout this phase? Because there were loads. After using the Fortune 3 pickaxe to get a bunch of diamonds, I had saved up enough to start working on some diamond armor. I was able to make boots, leggings, and after getting even more diamonds, I was able to get the helmet and also the chest plate. And because I had one diamond left over, I decided to make a diamond shovel. Now I could throw my iron armor away and wear full diamond gear. To start day 57, I got another monster invasion on my island and was able to get the second shulker shell I needed to make a shulker box. So as soon as I was done battling enemy foes, I went straight over to build a shulker box. Having this shulker box is super useful. Before I knew it, it was day 58, and little did I know this would be the most important day of them all. The end was close. Everything was beginning to feel real. Now I knew I wanted to battle the Ender Dragon, but I didn't want to do it in diamond armor, I wanted to slay it with netherite. So after spending some time exploring the very final phase, it was time to build this nether portal. Here it was, the full nether portal area, it was time to go in and explore. I was now in the depths of the nether, it was time to get ancient debris. I dug down to the perfect netherite layer. And after mining for ages, I couldn't stop coming across ancient debris. For days 76, 77, 78, and 79, I couldn't stop finding netherite. And by day 80, I escaped the depths of the nether with all of the netherite I would need. After combining it with some of the ancient debris I was able to get from the one block, I now had a total of 21 netherite scraps. And after combining that with gold, I ended up with 5 netherite ingots. I needed to enchant my full armor set and also get a much more powerful bow. So for that reason, I spent a little bit of time gathering some XP to get some levels, and I was able to do all of the enchanting I needed to do. I constructed a fresh bow and started the enchanting. I obtained some pretty good enchants on my armor, but I wanted something better for my helmet. So after a few attempts, I was able to get a decent helmet, so I equipped that onto my head. The time was here. I upgraded my armor all into netherite and also my sword. And even enchanted my shovel as well. And by day 83, I had full netherite armor. Now that I had all of this armor, there was only one thing I wanted to do before I was to fight the dragon. And that was to construct a castle where I would keep not only the dragon egg, but my enchantment table as well. There it was, the castle was constructed, but I was running out of time. I had to fight the Ender Dragon before day 100. So I made a brewing stand and got to work on brewing up some potions. I made some slow falling potions so I could drop from any distance and survive, and I even made strength too, so when I was to get up close to the dragon, my melee attacks would deal some serious damage. With everything in my inventory prepared to fight the dragon, and my potions all brewed up, I had to say goodbye to everything on my island, because if anything was to go wrong in this Ender Dragon fight, I would lose everything and never get to see it again. I said one last goodbye to all of my builds, my villagers, and even my dog, because it may be the last time I see them again. I took my final steps towards the end portal, and had one last check of my inventory to make sure I had everything. It was time to battle. I knew the Ender Dragon wasn't going to be easy. I put each individual Eye of Ender inside of the end portal frame. The time was here. Without hesitation, I jumped straight into the portal, and I was in the depths of the end. The Ender Dragon was here. I made my way over to each obsidian pole and tried to destroy each end crystal. My aim with the bow and arrow wasn't the best at first, but with some more shots, I built up my confidence and was hitting shots left, right, and center. It was like I couldn't stop. In fact, I felt unstoppable. With the dragon flying around above me, the pressure was on, and I had to get up to the end crystals, otherwise it would keep regenerating its health. By using my water bucket, I was able to get on top of each obsidian pole and destroy the end crystals. There was only a few left. I then climbed a tall obsidian pole and destroyed the end crystal that was hiding on top. Once I destroyed that one with the help of slow falling, I was able to destroy another one. 
I exploded the final end crystal, and it was just me versus the dragon. I slurped up my strength 2 potion, and got close to the dragon with my sword. It was a risky move, but it needed to be done. Before the dragon was able to fly away, I dealt some seriously strong sword attacks. I awaited its arrival back down to the middle, and I knew this was it. It was time to end this dragon once and for all. With one final sword strike, it was all over. I sat back and watched as the Ender Dragon disintegrated in front of my eyes. And a portal was opened, as a reward for me defeating the dragon. After collecting all of the XP, I obtained the dragon egg. I felt victorious. I dived into the portal and got back into the overworld. I was home, but more importantly, free from the ender dragon. I got the dragon egg and placed it right on the front of the castle. It was now day 100. I had done it. I had survived 100 days on one single block in Minecraft Hardcore. Also, the 600 days video of my normal Hardcore series is releasing very soon. So let me know down in the comments if you're excited to see that. But apart from that, thank you for watching this video. I really enjoyed making it. Also, we are so close to 1 million subscribers. Thank you guys all for the amazing support. Let's see if we can get to that 1 million subscribers. But as I said, thank you so much for watching this video and peace.